to spend just a few moments and look at a very interesting thing that happens on the guitar fingerboard when we try to move shapes and maintain the same quality. In this case, we're looking to move a major chord shape. In this case, it's a E major chord in second inversion. It has the fifth in the bass, B, E, G sharp. It looks like a displaced E major chord. I'm doing it here on the sixth, fifth, and fourth strings, just to illustrate a point. So we have seven, seven, six, B, E, G sharp. Now you might know our guitar is tuned in an arrangement of fourths with a major third and fourth again to finish off. Just to illustrate that really quickly, leaving out all sharps and flats and precision aspects of theory, just counting the alphabet letters from E to A, E, F, G, A, from A to D, A, B, C, D, from D to G, D, E, F, G, from G to B now, G, A, B, we just have a major third, two whole steps, G to A, A to B, now back to our B to E, B, C, D, E. Again, I'm not counting half steps or accidentals or anything like that. We're just looking at the letters themselves. So we have fourths with a third, major third, and then back to fourths. I'm going to take this major chord shape, E major, second inversion, B, E, G sharp. We're going to move it, everybody, one string set towards the floor. So I've gone from six, five, and four to five, four, and three. We get a same type of chord a major chord, but we've gone up a fourth because we've moved this way just as the tuning follows. We're, we're achieving the same kind of result. So we've gone from an E to an A. And I'm playing here 7, 7, 6, E, A, C sharp. So it's a second inversion major chord. If I move that same shape across, 7, 7, Six, I hope your ear can pick up right away that it's a different quality of chord. It's a minor chord. So instead of getting our major friend, we get minor. So what we're going to have to do is account for that second string, which means anytime we use the second string in, that, in this kind of a regular shape movement, we're going to have to account for it by moving it up a half step. So this 776 becomes 776, but we have to raise the second string because of the tuning discrepancy. And now we get this A major shape. I say A major because it references the open chord shape. So 777. So this A major shape is just a transformation of our E major shape moved across to the 4th, 3rd, and 2nd strings. So here we have A, D, F sharp. It's a D major chord. So we've gone in 4th, E to A to D. Now if we take this shape, 7, 7, 7, straight across, we don't get a major chord here exactly. We get a major 7th chord, G major 7. We have gone up a 4th. We haven't maintained the same quality. So again, whatever note was in this shape, 777 for A, we have to raise the note that's on the second string. So when we do that, we achieve our D shape. And this would be 787. So this D chord shape, surprisingly, is a transformation of this E chord shape. So we have E. A, D, G. The differences in their appearance is accounted for by this second string tuning difference. Now the second string tuning difference is a good thing in my estimation. It allows us to play certain intervals or certain chord shapes that would be hard to reach otherwise if we were tuned, say, straight in fourths. So in this case, something like D to E, uh, major second would normally be four frets apart when we use the third and second string 
it's two frets apart. So you can imagine then for larger reaches, they become smaller reaches when we utilize that second and third string set. I hope this has been a little bit of interest to you, that you can look at the guitar in a new way because of it. It is a simple idea, but again, this is something I want to draw your attention to as it's sometimes not obvious why things are as they are in our fingerings. I hope you find yourself enjoying your music today, feeling like you're making progress, and I wish you, as always, a very good day.